What's up, y'all? I'm Brad. We, uh, all of us here, got Ian Hink, Michael Huber, Hi. and Ben Moore. We all played a new title called Mortal Shell. Mortal Shell is the newest uh, entry in the long line of Souls-like games coming out. All heavily inspired by Dark Souls and all that good stuff. So we played a little demo, I would say, about mm, maybe like an hour's worth or something like that. What did that you guys boring. think? Just quick first impression. Quick full disclosure on my end, had some technical issues That's with right. this preview build. Totally acceptable, understandable preview build. I get it. Uh, so I actually couldn't get in, into the second area of the game. I tried three different times and my it just froze and, and hard crashed. Yeah. So I just played the very first big part of the game. I had a there crash. Were, there are yeah. guys in there that you would like, Huber. Yeah. <laughs> I had a crash. I know Ben, you had a couple crashes too. I had a couple crashes, yep. I had one. Ian, you were good? Okay, pretty much. I just okay. had one. Yeah. Uh yeah, oh. I, I liked it. Um I <coughs> it, it as you started out, like the first thing I noticed was this game is very inspired by Souls. Mm -hmm. Uh to the extent that I was jokingly called it like Sekiro Souls. Because it has sort of a die twice mechanic too. Uh but once you get beyond that, uh, it actually has some pretty cool mechanics mm -hmm. going on. Like the shell thing is cool. You like yeah. find a body and inhabit it, and if you get knocked out of the body, you have a chance to get back to it. Um, yeah, it's cool, and the controls are fairly tight. The hitboxes seem correct most of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really liked the impact of hitting people. Actually, that was mm -hmm. uh, that was probably the thing I liked most about it is hitting people felt good um right out of the gate on those like the, you, you come out and there's uh two guys playing loot they're just like trash mobs yeah. those dudes killed me like three times <laughs> yeah. because i mastered like, oh. that loot you can you can play that loot and yeah, i mastered me too. it <laughs> just these basic enemies i was like okay catch my bearings because i was like trying to figure out kind of the shell uh, using that in hardening, like I didn't. Yeah, yeah let's um, let's go it. back real quick and just mm -hmm. kind of explain what that ability is. This is kind of the game's, I think, one of the most unique features about it. So mm -hmm. pretty much every so often in combat, you have a little meter that fills up. You can do this ability called hardening, which is essentially blocking. I don't think you can block any other way in this game no. that I know of. You can yeah. parry. You can um, parry, but you can do this thing. You can absorb a hit. Uh, it only usually lasts for about one hit. I don't know about later on, like increasing that, but it's just like a quick window of so, like quick defense. Like you're fine, but what I think it's really interesting about it is that you're able to use it any time in combat. So you could do this mid swing or something like that to like uh, tactically, like okay, I'm gonna go in for a get quick damage. Don't have to worry about the hit. I'll just take this hit right now and be okay. Yeah, yeah that it's cool. It's a really cool mechanic because. It, it, because it is serving as your block, it's a very particular type of block. And I think something that's something that souls can kind of suffer with a little bit where your defense is just so easy to summon. And it's like, okay, well, I have the shield is 100% block. It's really easy to put up. Here, when you do it, the benefit is huge because mm -hmm. when enemies hit you, they recoil from it. And so you can kind of get into this nice rhythm of like, okay, I can absorb this one hit, time it right, create my own opening and then go and attack. But the ability is on a cooldown. There's this yeah. circle on the mm -hmm. left hand side where you can't constantly spam your hardening ability. And so you have to, that plays into stamina use and then your stamina is governed by the, the shell or kind of class that you're wielding. Yeah. And so you, you have to kind of like find the rhythm for each enemy and when to use it. And I think that's really nice. Uh, you brought up the shell. I think this is also an one of the other interesting aspects of the game. Pretty much you start off as this, like, I would say undead. You pretty much look, you're like, you're scorn undead. Looking. You yeah. look like, you look exactly <laughs> like the, uh, the white kind of like, 3D printed robots from Westworld, like the intro. <laughs> that you look exactly like. That's that. funny. Yeah. 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 I thought of the engineers from Prometheus, but yeah, they're yeah, too jacked. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you essentially you start off as this like weird husk kind of thing, and you find a body of like a dead soldier or whatever. These are essentially the game's class system, I believe. So the first one you find is a knight, and he seems to be kind of all. Uh, with the jack of all trade stats yeah, kind of just around. split down the yeah. middle. 
Good amount of health. A, yeah, good amount of health. And later on, you find like a thief, one that's a little more agile, has more stamina. Crazy so amount of like, stamina. <laughs> yeah, crazy amount of stamina. That's right. So I guess that's how they're going to handle like your uh, your builds, I guess, because they also have their own talent tree kind of thing that you fill up, or like a talent ring. Yeah. With unique moves like the knight had, you can reduce the cooldown of your hardening by 25%. I don't remember like a lot of the fee things, but I guess the, that's how they... one of them is like you get healed from poison damage or something. Okay, which, yeah, which something like that. Interesting. That's insane because there are a lot, a lot of damage. enemies that yeah. poison you. I, yeah, I was the frog. Yeah. There was like a frog thing that poisoned yeah, me. Yeah, I, I had stepped like, on a frog too. Yeah. yeah, I was like, how do I even deal with this? And I just like kept eating food to try to like counterbalance mm -hmm. it. I assume that was actually. That... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I assumed in the demo we'd only get one shell, so I like used all of my, uh, whatever it's called, tar, yeah, uh, tar, to upgrade my first the night shell, and then I got the thief shell in like the next room and liked that one better, but I had <laughs> no upgrade money left, so I couldn't unlock anything. <laughs> mm -hmm. Suck. I should just start the <laughs> demo over. Yeah, and I really liked the um, the merchant. He just had a cool vibe. Yeah, yeah uh, was that cool. was that was kind of the only like storytelling, world building thing that I saw uh, in the demo. And I was he actually... looked like uh, the fat guys from Demon Souls. I wish you got fat something, but you know, you guys know who I'm talking about. Yeah, like the smiley face, the top hats. Yeah, oh, yes. He yes, totally yes, reminded yes, yes. me of those guys. Come yeah, and then the uh, be because it's a preview build, I like to play like I normally wouldn't play, so I started attacking him mm -hmm. <laughs> just to see, like, oh, can you kill NPCs? And when you attack him, he, like, does this really awesome, like, dust clap to, like, back you away. It was really, cool. It was really cool. You can't then you, accidentally kill him. Yeah, and then you just, like, talk to him again. It's fine, but it, it was interesting <laughs> to see him, like, do this cool dust clap. And then he has, like, a little cat right there that you can yeah, pet. You can pet. Yeah. yeah, you can pet. Always them, appreciated yeah. it. Yeah, I really liked that, that area. Well, by the time I got to the, the second area in the boss, a lot of the healing that I had was uh, these mushrooms that you get. Mm -hmm. And I, I really like the way the healing is is applied here. And I wonder if this will carry over to the main game because it's not like, like an Estus or a blood vial where it's instantaneous. The healing lasts for a very long time, but it's extremely slow. So it's it's kind of like the gems in Dark Souls 2, yeah. uh, but but even slower than yeah, that. Yeah, very slow. The trade-off, though, that I think is really interesting is the mushrooms grow kind of on a cooldown. Mm -hmm. So you can go and pick some up and then kind of you fight some them. enemies and then come back and get them. Um, Which is so interesting because it's a real-time cooldown. So you could die like six times and if that cooldown's not done yet, it won't reset until it's just done, which I thought yeah. was really interesting. Mm -hmm. But but uh, like during the boss battle, to actually have the benefits of the healing come into effect, I had to play keep away for a while. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, the healing is directly tying into my strategy, which I liked. And there were cool things because when you... So if you take enough damage, you get knocked out of your shell and everything kind of mm -hmm. hardens, freezes for a second. And if you get back to your body without getting hit, like, basically at all, uh, you're full health again, uh, uh -huh. and you have your abilities back. If you then get hit a second time, you're donezo. Uh, what's, really what's really interesting, Ian, is um, I played as a thief, went and fought the boss, died, used the night shell, and then went back, and my body was the thief. And so oh. when I recovered it, I became the thief again. Oh, oh that's cool. That I is interesting. That. Yeah, so I, I really huh. love this idea. And it's kind of a shame that we only have two shells in this preview, because I wonder if in the full game, how fluid things will be. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and the, if you will have to adapt on the fly. The menu showed four. I don't know if they'll add more later or what, but mm -hmm. like uh, the... Man, that gives me an idea. I wonder if they're going to toy with this where you can like strategically set up like changes <laughs> to shells. Cuz I remember I I uh one time I took a poison mushroom to intentionally die to get all my health back. You know what I mean? Like I could <laughs> knock myself out of my thing just to get and like you're down to your last life then, but you know, you have full health. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, I just really liked the, I, I couldn't get a sense fully of the kind of the connecting of the environments. 
Uh, but I did really like just that first area. You know, it was just like classic moss covered cave. It just mm -hmm. had a really good sense of like scale to it, I guess. Like I felt like I was in this cave. Mm -hmm. uh, there were like strategic art or uh, crossbow people kind of on, you know, cliffs that you could fall off into. Uh, there were a couple big boys that, you know, wield like big spear things. Mm -hmm. They were pretty intense. Uh, let's talk about a couple of the other mechanics in the game. Mm -hmm. So first you have your meter, it looks like. So when you deal damage over time, or if maybe if you oh, take yeah. damage too, you have a meter that's yeah, at the yeah, bottom yeah. left oh, yeah. corner. Resolve, I think it's called. Yeah, yeah, it's probably resolve. That builds up, and with your resolve, you can do uh, two things, I believe. One is a super attack with your weapon. Uh, with the sword, it had like this uh, spike that would come out, and you could stab guys and do a ton of damage. I tried it, it with- It is extremely powerful. Yeah, it's extremely yeah. powerful. I tried it with the- uh, hammer and chisel, and I don't think it had anything. I might have to attach one. And the other one is this parry that not only does a lot of damage, but it heals you a lot when you do it, but it's only effective certain times when your meter is right. full. You can parry enemies pretty much whenever you want, but it doesn't really seem worth it to ever do it unless that you have that. Brad, that's kind of the, the thing that I ran into and it's something that I didn't like is the super attack with the sword was so powerful and effective. Yeah. Where I was like, because it actually is kind of difficult to build up resolve. It's like you really, really have to get in there mm -hmm. and and attack enemies constantly. And even if you kill an enemy, that, that doesn't necessarily mean you have a full meter of resolve. And it drains very quickly if you don't have a full bar. And so you kind of have to get in there, kill an enemy, and then immediately find something else if you want to attack it. So it can be a very precious resource. Mm -hmm. And it's not that the parrying in the health isn't useful, but I think you you just have other avenues for worrying about health. Yeah. And you you need the damage. The a lot damage more often. is so good. Yeah. Like it's kind of it's overtuned, I would say for sure, yeah. how much damage we were doing. Like Ben, you know this. It yeah. did maybe a quarter of the boss's health just in one yeah. thing. And, and then if you if you do it twice against the boss, that's half of the boss's yeah. HP. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty ridiculous. But yeah, the parry thing is cool. I like the idea of getting health back. I just don't see the re the real reason to use it too much, which is kind yeah. of disappointing. Definitely, I definitely used the parry to get out of a bind when I was first mm -hmm. going through the cave against one of those like sword in the chest guys that they pull the sword out and throw it at you. Uh, I parried one of them. Uh, oh, and I parried one of the big sickle arm guys, too. They're pretty uh -huh. easy to parry. And uh, that saved my bacon one time, got all my health back. But, yeah, the timing um, on the parry was weird for me, too. I couldn't always sure, yeah. time it right. But I think the timing in the, the preview build was weird in general. But to quickly touch on the parry thing again, um, I think because hardening was kind of your only major ability, and that is already very defensive... Um, I think it just kind of de-emphasized the need for a parry in general because the, the hardening, you know, was limitless on a cooldown, but limitless and allowed you to take a hit. I wonder if another more offensive ability would kind of complement mm -hmm. the, the yeah. parry and health system a little yeah, bit. Yeah, from what we play, it seemed like this is literally the beginning of the game. Yeah. So, yeah, start the, small. Both, both shells that we played as had pretty extensive skill skill wheels mm -hmm. and like half of the stuff was it said locked for the demo but that yeah. wasn't even like all the spaces on the thing so seem seemed like interesting st and like play some, style changing stuff but yeah, maybe what? some shells that favor parrying and stuff like yeah, yeah maybe yeah for sure free, you have a free parries but like reduced resolve requirement uh when it comes to the parrying it does have a system you have a you parry with like a weird onk looking thing uh, mm -hmm. And if there's a move that you cannot parry, that'll light up red. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Un unparryable attack. Yeah. <laughs> I do uh, think the game is definitely rough around the edges um, in, in a way that was frustrating. Um, definitely there were instances where some of the timing for things didn't line up, where sometimes I felt like I could dodge pretty quickly after an attack and then other times it felt like my character would get hung up and not do the dodge and so it just felt a little inconsistent mm -hmm. um the tracking of the enemies 
also kind of felt bad. Yeah. Yeah. I did some um, not locked on combat, and some of the tracking was pretty nuts. Yeah, like like. It, again, to bring up Dark Souls 2, it had some kind of Dark Souls 2 really bad tracking moments where it's like enemies are just kind of like whipping around to hit you. And it's like that doesn't really make sense and feels kind of uh, cheap, I guess, in a mm -hmm. way. Like it's not very interesting. And, it, and then they do want you to, of course, pay very close attention to enemy tells. Um, like you kind of fight these sort of like sea these fishy creatures with claws and they scream very very specifically when they attack yeah. um but like the guy that you were talking about that that rips off his head before he throws it at you that yeah, thing hits involved. you yeah if that thing hits <laughs> you it does poison damage for a very very very, very long, long time yeah and it will like home in on you in a very unnatural way uh depending on how <laughs> if you're far away it's not too bad but if you're close it just feels like it kind of snaps to you and and the, the 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 like swamp thing guys do like a across the room jump on you and bite your neck thing that like sometimes like if you get ganged up on you know like yes. all of us all of a sudden one of those is just on your back and you had you didn't even see it coming yeah because uh, like you're in tight quarters and the camera was blocking the onk or something so you didn't yes. know you were about to be attacked totally um, so yeah definitely a little rougher on the edges and stuff like that but. If you're watching the tells and fighting one on one and being strategic, like there were never any moments that felt like crazy unfair. Like it seems right. like stuff they could right. tune and fix for the main release more, and more so than not. The mechanics are kind of interesting enough that I definitely want to play more. Yeah, Sam. Uh, yeah, and, and see kind of where all of those things evolve. Uh, let's talk about one more thing. Before we wrap it up with our general thoughts, uh, let's talk about the item usage. I know, Ben, you had some thoughts about this. Yeah. So essentially, you have items, and a lot of them, they don't tell you what they do until oh, right. you use them. I kind of I kind of like this. I guess it just puts me more in the mindset of, like, I if I'm this character, I'm picking this up, I don't know what it does, let's just find out. <laughs> but the way I remembered it, it was after you used it the first time, the first you time, knew... Right? you knew what the basic effect was. Like, this will heal you over 40 seconds or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then you unlocked more lore as you used it more times? Or was that what it's to... for? I think... That's what I thought. Like, I think it always tells you what it is after the first use. Well, it's nice now playing the preview being like, aha, I know what that is for the yes. kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, something else that I do want to touch on that, that I do think in fact affected my enjoyment, and you guys were mentioning this, before we started recording where like obviously the game is inspired by the soul series but sometimes i think it is is way too on the nose with its inspiration where yeah. like, you were saying ian that omar just thought you were playing dark souls 3 um at, at a glance and you definitely feel that i think um from the way it presents its story to even down to how how items are written and the way loading screens look and yeah. like like everything to the most minute detail, it just kind of oozes souls the, uh, to the point where I think it's harder for me to invest in whatever story it's trying to tell. The Shrine Maiden actually even makes a joke about bonfires, which is, you know, uh -huh. which is cute, whatever. I, I, I think like one thing that they could adjust before release that would be an e the easiest fix would just be to differentiate the, the loading screens from being exactly Bloodborne uh, mm -hmm. in Dark Souls. Like, because the item descriptions that come up when the game is loading, like, straight up out of Bloodborne. <laughs> uh, and if they just differentiated that, it would it would just take a little bit, one little item away sure. from that, too. But yeah, it's very, very, very Souls. But, uh, and, like, I was skeptical about this game from the previews and stuff. Um, and especially that weird, the, the thing they show, showed at whatever event that was that everyone was like, that was a weird boss fight. That, uh, and like, why <laughs> yeah. are they petrifying <laughs> sometimes and stuff like that needed to be explained more, uh, that like, this is the tutorial and Harden is a thing. Like if they had just done that, like it would have come across way better. But, um, yeah, I was very skeptical about this game going in because so many souls likes are just janky nightmares that are not fun to play 
And what I will say for this is it does have a bunch of unique ideas that I think are really, really cool. And it feels good. Like it's a preview build. So a little rougher on the edges, but like, it feels like an actual, you know, professional game. Good impact. Uh, I really yeah. like the way uh, attacks kind of combo into each other with different animations. Like you do a light attack into a heavy or you do a light light into a heavy and it's like a unique animation for those different sequences and how you kind of have to feel out. You can't just mash it. You have to kind of feel out the timing for that rhythm. Uh, I, I really like that as well. And it adds a lot to and some, something and unique I really like with the, the, uh, the enemies freaking out. Like I killed some some enemies oh, yeah. and other ones like stumble back like, whoa, this <laughs> guy's intense. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, maybe this was in my imagination, but the R1 light attack like didn't always seem to be. Uh, it comes from different sides, but it doesn't always seem to be the exact same speed either. Like it has kind of a more realistic variance of, of uh, attack speeds. Uh, which I thought was an interesting choice, you know, because usually like souls and stuff is very regimented and like this is how fast this attack is, you know. You also have to pay pretty close attention to enemy knockback. Um, like there are a lot of times where an enemy will recoil from your attack or from like bouncing off your harden ability and your next light attack won't be in range. And so yeah. you'll, you'll actually have to move up to continue, you know, your offense. And I, I like that as well. Yeah, yeah, and the heavy attack, the, like, thrust move, a little extra range. I like that, too. There's some strategy with that. All yeah. in all, cool, cool game. Yeah, a uh, little, little rough around some of the edges, as you guys have said, but I think there's enough potential there to keep me interested. Mm -hmm. Like, when this game, game comes out, I'm going to play it and see how it is. I think what's there is pretty solid. Some things need a, just a little tweaking, which I think they can do. But otherwise, I am looking forward to playing the full game. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. All right. That's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.